Hi everyone, welcome to online classroom Jekutio. In this video, Jekutio is going to talk about chapter one of Form Two Science, which is biodiversity. The first topic that we are going to look at is the diversity of organisms. Before we even start, there is one very important word that you have to understand. That is biodiversity, the title of our chapter. So, in order to understand this word, I would like to break down this word into two very different words. That is biology and diversity. These two words join together become biodiversity. So, let's break it down. What is the meaning of biology? Biology means living things, and diversity means many different types. So when you put this together, what is the definition of biodiversity? It is the diversity of organisms, whether microorganisms, animals, or plants. Meaning we have many different types of living things, whether they are small or big, whether they are animals or plants. If this is too difficult for you to remember or understand, let me put it even more、uh, simply. Biodiversity simply means. Many different types of living things. That should be easier for you to remember, right? I hope so. Well, do you know that in Malaysia we have many, many different types of animals and plants because we are one of the twelve mega biodiversity countries in this world. Why do you think we have so many different types of animals and plants? It is because of our climate. Our climate, meaning our weather, is equatorial. It is tropical. It is very warm, and we have rain throughout the year. So that is very ideal for many different types of animals and plants to live in, and that is why we are one of the twelve mega biodiversity countries. That is super super great, isn't it? Why do we have biodiversity? Why is there so many thousands upon thousands of types of animals and plants? It is because of two very important factor. It is the habitat and also the climate. Okay, the different types of animals and plants they will be in different places. That is the habitat, habitat, and also different climates. That is the different weather because. They they are born or they are created to be in different condition. I will show you a few example of climate and habitat, and let's look at the the example of animals that live there. For example, number one, in the desert you can normally find camel. Secondly, polar regions where it is really cold, you will find polar bear and penguin. Polar bear and penguin cannot live in the desert, and the camel cannot live in the polar regions. How about in the very wet soil? Normally, you will find earthworm. How about under the sea? You will find many different fishes, and they cannot switch places because of the habitat and the climate that is so different. So remember. There are very two very important factors of why biodiversity exists. Okay, this is a very popular question in your exam. Please remember it. Next, why is biodiversity so important? Why do you think we we must have biodiversity? Well, number one, it is because biodiversity provides us with different sources of food. Animals and plants supply food to humans. Well, imagine if there's only one type of meat and one type of plant for you to eat, that would be super boring, right? Number two, the cycle of nutrients, pollination, and interaction between different types of organisms will create a balance in nature. And that is very important. Number three, the areas where we have very rich biodiversity, we can develop them into recreational places. For example, Jekutio lives in Penang. We have botanical garden. Many people like to go there 
for a walk and to relax while you can enjoy many different types of plants. Number four, it is very important in medical field. Why? Because many different types of herbs can be widely used. They are widely used in the manufacture of medicines and cosmetics. And number five, biodiversity like timber, bamboo, and rattan are very important. They are the different types of forest products for us to make musical instruments, furniture, and buildings that become our raw materials. Because of all this that, uh, diversity in the resources, we are able to build many different things. And of course, last but not least, it is very important to the field of education. Human increase our knowledge and create new technology by doing constant research and study of microorganism, animals, and plants, in other words, biodiversity. But we need to know how to effectively manage our biodiversity, or else what happened in this picture? We might keep destroying them, and then in the end we will hurt the biodiversity, and that will bring a lot of very, very bad effects to our earth and also to us, the human race. So, how can we preserve and conserve biodiversity? Well, I will have a list of suggestions here. Number one, I think we should ban the killing and trade of endemic and endangered animals and plants. What is the meaning of endemic? Endemic simply means species that live in one specific location. For example, some of the plants and animals that can only be found in Malaysia or a few other countries that is close to Malaysia, for example, in the Southeast Asia. So can you name some examples of endemic plants and animals in Malaysia? Let's look at a few examples. Rafflesia flower, the pitcher plant, Malayan tiger, leatherback turtle, and the Borneo pygmy elephant. These are all the examples of endemic plants and animals in Malaysia. So just now, Jagutio said the first suggestion of the first way to preserve and conserve biodiversity will be the banning of killing or trading of all those animals and plants that are endemic or endangered. Secondly, I think we should also protect the habitat, meaning we should protect the place where these animals and plants stay. How do we do that? We can create national parks or forest reserves. Thirdly, I think we can also undertake reproductive program. What does that mean? Meaning we reproduce the plants and animals. For example, we can have seedling nurseries meaning we nurse or we, we start to protect or we provide a place for the baby trees to grow and that will help with the reforestation. Or we can also have a few centers for turtle hatcheries. What does that mean? That means we create a very safe environment for the turtle egg to hatch and for them to grow as baby turtles before we release them back into the ocean. And finally, another suggestion and a strong, strong encouragement from Jekutio is we all should have a habit of recycling. If we recycle materials like paper, we can actually reduce deforestation. And from there, we will be able to preserve and conserve biodiversity. Do you have any other suggestion how we can preserve or conserve biodiversity? If you do, Please don't be afraid to share them with me in the comment section. I will read all of them and respond to you. Well, that's all from Jekutio in this video. I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye! If you have learned something new from this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.